from the Tie Cats Audio Network. This is Tie Cats Today with Braden Neville. On today's episode, we hear from Casey Sales as we discuss his newly signed deal that'll keep him in the hammer for two more seasons. And we also hear from Ed Hervey as he discusses free agency and how the process has gone so far in his first offseason as the Tie Cats general manager. It's Monday, February 12th, 2024, and this is Tie Cats today. We're now only two days away from free agency on the 14th, and fans are anxiously waiting to see what their rosters are going to look like for next season. The Ticats did manage to bring back some key pieces to their defense, re-signing Richard Leonard, which will be a big boost to the Ticats secondary. That's shaping out already pretty nicely. And they also extended Casey Sales for two more years, a guy who was arguably one of, if not their best defensive player last season, finishing with 50 tackles, seven sacks, and was always a favorite on the PFF ranking chart. And also, captured his first all-star nod. So it was a no-brainer to lock him up for a couple more years, and he joined me to discuss the deal. Joining me now is defensive tackle Casey Sales. Casey, congrats on the extension. Um, What was it that got this deal done at this point in time and to get it done going into the season? Um, You know, during the exit meetings during this last year after our uh, our playoff loss, uh, we kind of had that discussion with uh, myself and some of the GMs and coaches about uh, possible extension, but um, you know, there wasn't really a second thought when I uh, when I when we had those conversations. Um, you know, sometimes you got to think about um, kind of yourself or kind of the situation within the CFL or um, you know just kind of overall, right? But um, it's not really a situation I thought twice about. Me and my wife loved it up there um, this last year. Obviously, everything worked out for me personally, you know, all star and everything. But um, you know, obviously, the end goal is still get that great cup. So um, you know, I still want to bring that to bring that back to Hamilton and. Uh, can't be more excited to come back so how was the process of dealing with with ed hervey he's the new gm now for the ticats how was that process for you it was good um yeah obviously he got promoted this uh last spring what a month or two ago uh um but we had a good exit interview um obviously knew um knew of him from last year obviously being signed and everything but um he's a great guy had some great combos and uh you know even talking this you know last few days um, with him after after being, being signed, uh, he he expects a lot more of me, uh, leadership wise and everything, not just playing wise. So um, that's going to be probably the biggest next step uh, going into camp this this year. So um, you know, obviously, I thought leading the D line uh, this last year went pretty well, but um, it was tough to kind of get that that role and grasp of those other guys on the team. That um, you know, we had a lot of new younger guys too as well. So. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's just another step that I have to take going into camp this year. And uh, I'm going to contact some of these guys that are going to be signed, I think, believe tomorrow, I want to say. Um, yeah. So, and then, you know, whoever else I get signed. But um, that's just one thing, you know, one step at a time that, you know, I kind of got to take to lead the team this year and get to that, that last game of the year. Do you feel that leadership role is, is something that you're, you, you want to take on? Like that's, you want to step up more as a leader for this team? Yeah, um, you know, it's not only leading by, um, you know, obviously, obviously explanation of, uh, you know, playing wise, but mm-hmm. just having those little talks with little guys, you know, it's, it takes so much in the locker room to go out onto the field and be able to play together and communicate together. Um, it's basically mm-hmm. just a trust factor, right? So um, if you can trust that guy next to you, and that guy in front of you, the guy behind you and everything, you know, it's going to um, go so much further than just being a friend, being a teammate. So, um, yeah, it's just little things at a time that really builds up starting with camp, even before camp, like I said, mm-hmm. kind of contact some of these guys and um, kind of going from there. But obviously it's a long season, so um, there's going to be some growing pains during camp and um, preseason going into the season. But um, if we can kind of whisk those away, obviously I think we started 0-3 this last year. If we can even grab one or two of those first three games, yeah. it's so big for the, the long run um, going into the season. I do like how that schedule looks. I mean, I, mean I, I think you should want to play anyone, but I do like how they, the season starts off for, the, for this team. I want to talk a little bit about a couple of these new guys coming in. Jordan Williams, uh, obviously, is going to be playing behind you, but what's, what have you seen from him and playing against him while he was with Toronto? Yeah, I know he uh, – I, I knew he was a first-round first, first round pick. Um, was it two years ago to BC? Saw him out of BC yeah. last uh, last year or two before he went to Toronto, but – um, he's a good player. Uh, it's just one of the things that, you know, some guys were kind of saying that he maybe didn't have his best year last year, but, um, you know, when you have that many guys around you, um, 
you know, when he was at the Argos, it's, it's tough to make all those plays. Right. So, yeah. uh, you know, those, those D linemen and linebackers were so good for them that, you know, he might not get all those plays. Right. So um, he's a really good, re- really good player from what I've seen on film, watch a lot of the, um, those, uh, the defense from the Argos this last year. So I'm excited to play with him and, uh, you know, obviously some of these new guys that are coming in. So. Uh, Coach Washington will be back next year. He'll be your defensive coordinator. What's that relationship like with Wash and, and being around him, especially in that first season with the Ticats? It was good. We had a, um, I thought we had a good season. He, I mean, he's a great communicator to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I think uh, you know he's, uh, he's a little bit older, but he's still got that young factor to him, right? I mean, not old at all. I don't want to. I don't want him. To, <laughs> I don't want to <laughs> age him. Give me a text, but, uh, <laughs> but he's, been, he's been around. Obviously, he's, he was a player um, you know, back in the day and played in the CFL. So he's got that good mentality to him, and uh, he likes to joke around and everything. So it's it's good to have that 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 relationship with him, and it's it's an easy relationship to have with them. So we had a, we had a good uh, exit meeting. I was um, you know kind of taking my time to leave the stadium this year. I guess this last year, but. Um, we had a good conversation for a long while and, um, yeah, I didn't know if he was going to be back or not. Obviously didn't know the whole process, what was going to happen. Obviously the expectations are so, so high for, uh, for Hampson, especially, um, you know, last great cup in 99. So, um, yeah, yeah, I didn't know how that process was going to hand, uh, you know, pan out obviously, but, um, glad he's back and glad we have, um, you know, that main kind of tree root there. Right. So kind of just branched out from there and, um, obviously some new, um, defensive coaches you know secondary linebackers and d-line so yeah uh, can't wait to kind of branch out with them and uh but yeah we had that uh that main route there that um has ties in with the community and everything and the team so i'm excited to get going again with them and one of those coaches that d-line coach will be glenn young is, is it nice to have another a new coach almost for a different perspective almost on things yeah you know it's it's every coach that i've been with um last you know seven eight years whatever professionally it's it's good to grasp um a good handle 50 50 on what you're good at and kind of what they bring to the table too. There's um, each team I've been on, I've learned, you know, different techniques and different play style um, from each of them. So um, it'll just be another perspective to learn from his side of stuff. Obviously he's been around and uh, he was, uh, he was leaving Winnipeg right when I was getting in, but um, those guys at Winnipeg, when I was there, I just had Jake Thomas from Winnipeg uh, text me a week or two ago and, um, he's talking about Glenn Young, so I'm excited to get yeah. going. I know he's a good guy and a good coach. So, and I want to talk about another guy who re-signed today on that secondary. But Rich yeah. Leonard also announced today as re-signing. I wonder if you oh, can really? just. That's awesome. I, uh, he, I mean, I thought he should have been All Star this last year. It's you know that's a tough way to go sometimes, but um, you know I know how it is. But he's he's an animal out there. I you know every ball that you know, he's he's out there with. I, I I trust him, man. He's a good guy. We were just a few lockers away from each other, and. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't say, you know, great enough things about him. So I, uh, I'm pretty pumped about that. That's the first time I've been, I heard about that. Yeah. I, I'm breaking I, the news I, here too. I was on Twitter too. Uh, <laughs> you know, read some stuff on, you know, kind of some guys signing. So that's awesome. Yeah. You may, signing this deal really shows that, you know, you're dedicated to Hamilton. This is a place you want to be. Is this a place you can see yourself playing out possibly your career? I know we're looking deep into the future, but is this a place you see yourself for a long time, even maybe one day past that contract? Yeah, um, it's definitely it's definitely an option. I, it's definitely a thing I, I I think of every year, and it's um, another thing I thought about this year. It's um, I think the fact that it's not a thing I thought twice twice about um, definitely shows something. I mean, the fans are great. I mean, every, every everything was phenomenal. I, c- I couldn't ask for more in uh, in the city of Hamilton. So uh, all the fans there. I mean, there's you know multiple times in the grocery store. I you know people come out to me and you know talk to me about uh the fans or the games you know everything going on so um it's 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 tough to find those things in, in certain cities especially the bigger cities and uh yeah i mean if if i could play till chris van zell 40 years old <laughs> Hamilton, like i wouldn't be mad about it so yeah i mean i guess we'll see obviously you got to stay healthy that's the number one thing and stay on the field so uh, yeah just taking a year at a time right now so I'm looking a little deep into the future here. Let's worry about this next couple of years. But uh, last time we talked, it was right before the holidays. I believe you were getting ready for the big dinner. Since then, what does training look like for you? How has it been the last couple months here in this off season? Yeah, just kind of taking it easy. Um, you know, thankfully didn't have any um, any major issues last year. Obviously, some bruise and, and nicks and everything. But um, right now, just kind of really just kind of been lifting low cardio, low impact cardio stuff. Um, really don't really start jumping into. Um, on field running until kind of about next month. This is kind of, you know, obviously I know Mm -hmm. my body and uh, I know there's a lot of guys that do um, kind of on field running, um, you know, 
into the off season after the season, but I, I like to take as much time as I can, um, at least kind of have an idea of kind of going into that. But I've already kind of got a, a process that I do in the off season, especially um, now that I know the CFL schedule and everything. You know, it's not like NFL where you have OTAs and mini camps going into summer, where you have a, yeah. a three month window and a, and then what three or four weeks off before camp. So um, it's really just kind of taking that time off that. Um, you know, I try and tell guys to take that time off too, because just mentally mm -hmm. and everything, it's such a long season. You know, it's another, you know, another game longer than the NFL. You got two preseason pre games in there. And, uh, you know, it's just for the, the reason and two, it's, you know, main thing of camp, you know, we don't have the NFL camp where you have every, after every five days you have off. We have a, a stretch of 10, 11, 12 days that you really yeah. put it out. And a lot of those guys that don't make teams, uh, I mean, I remember even my second, second year at uh, Winnipeg, Got a tweak in my foot and, you know, had an idea that I was going to start, uh, but, I, you know, still stressing out about, you know, I think I still missed a week. I missed mm -hmm. two games during the preseason, but, um, but again, that's just like kind of a, a mindset that I have of, I don't want to get hurt. I need to stay on the field as much as possible, but, um, you know, obviously that's, that's the best thing that you need to do is like the best, when I was the Steelers, um, you know, the coach there, best uh, ability is availability, man. So you got to yeah. stay on the field, man. So um, that's the number one thing. You got to get that past that stretch of the 10, 11, 12 days uh, during camps, during CFL, because that's kind of the main main spot where you, you find your spot and, you know, kind of go from there. But um, obviously those preseason games are going to be huge too. Um, you know, some of the veterans, I don't know how much they're going to play. It depends on quarter two, three quarters. But yeah, um, especially for those younger guys too that, come in or just been playing for the first time last year or just like maybe going into the end of their rookie contract into their second year now um you know again health is just so major that you got to just take a little bit of a break in the off season yeah. so um it's not like you need to be sitting on your couch not do anything but <laughs> you know yeah you know your body by now so uh you know whatever you think is best um, you should probably probably go with your gut feeling but what do you think about going into a camp now with a new head coach and Scott Milanovic at the helm? I know you've known him, but uh, now with him as your head coach, it must be a little, probably going to be a different experience. Yeah, it'll be different. Um, loved Coach O last year. Obviously, the changes are you know out of yeah. my control, but um, the way he talked last year um, throughout the year, I didn't talk to him too much. Obviously, he had his own um, things going on with the quarterbacks and offensive stuff, but mm -hmm. um, I roomed with Matthew Schiltz, and he was kind of telling me, you know, basically how he roles and how he, um, you know, processes stuff. But, um, I like the way, I mean, every time he talked, I just, it's straight to the point. It's mm -hmm. good mentality about everything. So I'm pretty excited to get going with him. Obviously, you know, there's going to be some, some growing pains, obviously, regardless, there's going to be new coaches, new players. So, uh, yeah. got to be a, you know, day to time as, as you should. So, but yeah, so far I've, I've liked the way he's, you know, kind of done stuff. So. And one final question here, Casey. What do you got going on for the rest of the offseason outside of football? I always like to talk about what's going on. What do you have going on? What have you been up to? I uh, haven't been up to much. Really just working out kind of four days a week right now. I'm trying to work on a little bit of mobility. Uh, mm -hmm. My wife and I got a, a Pilates machine. She uh, oh wow, did that. She Man, her, those, those classes are really, really expensive, man. So we, yeah. ended up, we ended up, the machines are a little expensive, but like for the long run of stuff, it's uh, – it's worth getting one. So kind of been doing that like two, three times a week and we're really working on flexibility. I mean, I don't know what the age of like old players are, but like, <laughs> like 30 is like yeah. really and football. Definitely. Right. So like I'm 28, I'll be 29 in September. So like, I, I want to be as flexible as possible for as long as possible. So I don't think I'm at the point yet that I need to be dropping away for flexibility and speed purposes, but yeah, uh, it, I think it'll help just kind of lower body stuff, especially, but, um, yeah, that's kind of about it. Just hanging with, uh, you know, some friends and family I was with the, at our neighbors yesterday for the, the chiefs game. Um, yeah. What a game. Dynasty there. And, you know, I'm three hours from Kansas city too. So everyone True. around me is chiefs fans. So it's, uh, it's crazy to see. I kind of wanted the 49ers to win that, but, um, <laughs> I think a lot of people did. I think I it was know. one of those things, but it was the script. I mean, I, I think that's uh, what it was. I I, I, <laughs> Twitter sweet. Like, yeah. Where, you know, Who, so. Who's, um, is your wife uh, the one showing you how to do the Pilates stuff? Is she more the expert than you, or are you guys kind of learning together? She's the expert. She knows what she's been doing. She, yeah. She's been doing it for, uh, I think, about two years now. So, you know, we got a TV down there and uh, in the basement where we have it, but 
um kind of just been doing these like youtube videos and uh just mm -hmm. kind of going from there but yeah it's some of the stuff is hard man if you're <laughs> i know it's crazy if you see a video of a 300 pound lineman doing it they're shaking i'm sh like i'm shaking doing like just core stuff it's hard yeah. it's good stuff it's a it's a different type of workout than just lifting and running man it's it's difficult do you find it's making a difference at all like you're noticing that oh, yeah. already yeah yeah. yeah, I think just the stability wise and like, I think it just helps your flexibility so much. It's so easy to do. Like, I mean, there's a million different parts to it that like you could add on, but like we just have the main, main kind of platform, have a few weights, have a few things that you kind of squeeze yeah. while you're doing stuff. But there's just so many different movements that you can do that like you can't do from lifting and running and just, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. I'm getting into it, but um, yeah, it's, it's difficult. There's a, I know even last year, you know, I've been trying to get into stretching and stuff a little bit more. Mm -hmm. My career has kind of been progressing, but, um, yeah, just kind of doing step by step with it, but it's fun. It's fun. It's difficult. Like I said, but we'll see you at training camp. You'll be, you'll be as nimble as can be. You'll be flexible yeah. out there. It'll be great. Yeah. We'll be excited to see it. But Casey, appreciate you joining me today, man. Congratulations once again on the extension and we'll see you hopefully here soon at Tim Hortons field, man. Yeah. I appreciate you again. That was Casey Sales. Big thanks to him for joining the show today, and congratulations once again on the new deal sticking around in Hamilton for two more seasons. The guy making all these moves is GM Ed Hervey, and he sat down to talk about how free agency has gone so far and the process behind it. The kind of players we're looking for, obviously we're looking for fast, durable, uh, athletic players. The, you know, the, the player portion goes without saying. I think the most important part of it is also understanding who they are as people, the character, how they fit in to, within the organization. Are they a, a locker room fit? Will they be a community fit? Um, whether we don't have a relationship with them, you know, just that opportunity to speak with them, do we think it's gonna it's gonna work out, right? We want high character players who can play. I think the again, as I mentioned, the the part where they're on the field, that stuff goes without saying. We're not calling them if we didn't believe they could play. It's whether they, it's the stuff off the field, having them in our communities, having them in our locker rooms, players that have um, gone through adversity, what type of adversity they've gone through and what their responses are to that. Because the season is so long and you go through the ups and downs, you wanna you do your best um, information gathering with hopes that when you do get, get a player in the building, that if you do have tough times, is that they're, they're steady, they're consistent, and their high character can pull them through. Whereas low character players usually bring others down and that's when you usually have catastrophe and, and, and disastrous seasons. So a part of our process is, a, and a major part of it is to ensure that the character of the people that we're bringing in uh, fit what we're doing moving forward. That was GM Ed Hervey. You can watch that full interview on the Ticat social channels and YouTube. And for those of you listening to this podcast, you can now catch Ticats today on YouTube as well. So make sure to go check that out. And finally, the Tiger Cats are looking for the next brand ambassadors to perform on game days and attend community events throughout the next season. So those auditions will be held on March 3rd at Tim Hortons Field. All you have to do is follow at Dance Cheer Tie Cats on Instagram for the most up-to-date information. That's all the time for today. Make sure to tune in tomorrow as I will be speaking to the newly re-signed Rich Leonard and more.